Optionsellers.com. I've had a bunch of people mention Optionsellers.com, the hedge fund that lost around $150 million of their clients' money by being short calls and natural gas. And I wanted to give you my thoughts regarding what transpired with Optionsellers.com. So Optionsellers.com is a hedge fund. It had around $150 million in assets under management, which is actually quite small for a hedge fund. It was run by James Cordier. I heard or read someone refer to him as the options king or the king of options, or perhaps he referred to himself as this. But the, the thing is that option sellers, they sell option premium, which is a fantastic strategy. However, they went bust and they went bust for four main reasons. The first reason is actually the first and the second reason can potentially be combined, but the primary reasons are greed. When you sell option premium, there's a way that you can design the trade where your trades are profitable 90 to 95% of the time. That's just simply probability. But even if you're profitable 95% of the time, if your trading size is so large that during those 5% of the trades that go against you, you end up losing a substantial amount of money, then you can have an unlikely scenario that happened to optionsellers.com happen to you. So for example, some of my students, virtually every single one of my students makes money, but some of them in October and December of 2018 lost money that they have not been able to recover yet. And the reason is that prior to October and December of 2018, they were winning almost every single one of their trades. So it wasn't enough for them to make three to 5% every single month. Instead, they were trying to make 15% a month. So they were selling strike prices that were too close to the current market price, and they were selling way too many contracts. Then when October and December rolled around, the positions went against them, and instead of being able to roll and manage the positions like we were able to, and just simply wait for a volatility contraction like what happened in January of 2019, that way you can make that money back, they were forced to close the positions for a loss. And that's the exact same thing that happened to optionsellers.com. They got greedy, they were used to winning almost all of their trades and they were just trading way too big. Then what happened, the third thing, so the first thing is that they got greedy. The second thing is that they traded too large. So they got greedy, they were choosing strike prices that were too close to the current market price. Their size was probably around 10 times larger than it should have been, which is enormous. The third thing is actually not, um, I'm gonna go in order. The third thing is that they were trading commodities. Commodities have a history of going hyperbol hyperbolic, whether on the upside or the downside. It's not uncommon for a commodity to go up 10 days in a row or for it to fall 10 days in a row. And what happened with natural gas is it essentially went up 60% in one week, which is astronomical. So when you trade commodities, they're inherently a lot more risky than equities. Equities have more two-sided action. You have earnings, you have a dividend, you have a lot of buyers, you have hedge funds, private offices, what private wealth management groups, pension funds, etc. All of this is is help support the price of a stock. But with a commodity, it's even though it's a liquid market because it's traded in the futures market it's still relatively small. I don't know how large the natural gas market is, but it's probably not much larger than like five or $10 billion, potentially even smaller than that. As a result, very volatile moves, both on the upside and the downside, are not uncommon. And this is exactly what happened with natural gas. During one week time period, it, it increased in price by 60% in one week. And we see this happen in commodities relatively frequently. I remember, I think it was January of 2016 when oil fell to around $26 a barrel. And then we also saw it earlier in around mid-August of 2018 when gold fell, I think it fell below 1100 or let's say around 1100 Now gold is above 1300 We're in early February of 2019. So commodities are extremely volatile and that's one of the main reasons why I don't trade them. Or there is an occasional time when I'll trade a small amount of gold because it's uncorrelated with the overall S&P 500. But if I do trade gold, I trade options on the GLD or the GDX 
uh, op on the GDX or the GLD ETF. If I do trade options, I take a very small position. So they definitely, one of the reasons why they got burned is because they traded commodities, which has a history of being extremely volatile. The other thing is they just simply got very unlucky. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. When you trade commodities, there is a higher possibility that you're gonna get unlucky. When you trade options, you should make sure that even though you're gonna win 95% of your trades when you sell options, that there's still 5% of the time that you're gonna lose options and you have to make sure that you plan accordingly so that you don't trade too large, you don't trade too big. And especially when they traded commodities, they should have built that in and instead of potentially traded like one-tenth the size that they were trading at that time, because it's a commodity and it has a history of being extremely volatile, perhaps you should have, they should have traded only 5% of the number of total contracts that they traded. But simply put, it was just a perfect storm of everything, all these factors just confluenced together and they just became extremely unlucky and it became a perfect storm and it brought down their hedge fund. So yeah, luck definitely plays a part because it's all probabilities. And I definitely don't expect that natural gas, it's possible that natural gas is not going to experience a 60% up move or down move over the next five or 10 years. But it just so happened that option sellers was on the wrong side of the market. They were overexposed and it ended up blowing up their hedge fund. So yeah, luck definitely plays a part in, in their sense. And in, in their specific instance, they were very unlucky. So remember greed, they were greedy. Their size was way too large. They were trading commodities. Uh, which has a very high likelihood or, or much greater likelihood of going up 10 days in a row or going down 10 days in a row. Um, and I mentioned gold and oil and also they were unlucky. But the reality is that um, retail traders have no choice but to sell option premium. Again, I wanna repeat that. Retail traders have no choice but to sell option premium because Unless you want to hold an SPY index and earn 4 to 5% a year, then that's completely cool. But you can't day trade because I posted a study that said that they looked at 360,000 day traders. And of those 360,000, they analyzed every single trade, 359,000 lost money consistently. 500 of the best traders, so that's one, one in every seven, one in every 7,200. Okay, so one in every 7,200 traders, and or is that math correct? All right, whatever it is. So five, five, pretty much um, right, 5,000 or 500, 500 out of um, 360,000. Okay, so the top 500 out of 360,000, they earned a whopping five percent alpha meaning that if an individual just held the spy index the spy etf index they would have beaten 500 out of 360,000 day traders would have exceeded the average person who just simply held on and bought the spy index by five percent so those people even the most successful day traders they're not going out and buying expensive cars and living in mansions. No, they're pretty much eating off the dollar menu at McDonald's. So I'm gonna post the link to this research study below, but the point is that you don't have a choice if you're looking to achieve alpha and, and you're looking to achieve outsized gains in the stock market. You have no choice but to sell option premium. You're going to have to act like the casino and act like the insurance company and sell option premium. But Take a lesson from optionsellers.com. Don't be like James Cordier and make sure that you do not get greedy, that you watch your size. You probably should not trade commodities or if you do and you wanna trade options on commodities, you trade them very small and you know, luck plays a part. They just got unlucky. But I definitely don't think that this is a reason to not trade options. It was just a perfect confluence of factors that came into play and it led to optionsellers.com going bankrupt. And that sometimes happens when you get greedy. David Jaffe with beststockstrategy.com. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. Please, um, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. I try to respond to everyone. You can go to beststockstrategy.com and enter in your email address and receive over $400 of free training materials 
And if you want to join my trade alerts, we are running a special where it's only $19 for one week of trade alerts, so you can try that out. It's the best product available in my opinion, and if you have any questions, I'm here to help you, and I appreciate your attention.